you for joining us and uh, tuning in one more time to Faith Formation, uh, hashtag He's Working It Out or God is Working It Out on Wednesday, a midweek session where we come together uh, for just a little while to study God's Word, uh, to show thyself approved, rightfully dividing the Word of Truth. But more importantly, hopefully giving you some power, giving you some encouragement uh, and some hope along uh, this journey. I thank God for your presence and I thank God for your participation uh, and all of your support of this ministry uh, and in your support uh, of everything uh, that we do here at the Metropolitan Baptist Church. Uh, so uh, let's get to it. You know, it's the Lenten season and uh, sometimes and oftentimes the word of God, it cuts going and it cuts coming. Uh, it not only hopefully impacts your life, but it impacts my life. Uh, as you all challenge me to study more, to go deeper into God's Word. Uh, and the more we study the Word of God, the more uh, I'm enlightened, the more I learn. And as long as you maintain an open mind, uh, you can always glean something different from the Scripture. If you recall from last week, uh, which was Ash Wednesday, and we started this Lenten season, headed towards uh, Resurrection Sunday morning, uh, we dropped ourselves in Isaiah, the 58th chapter, uh, around verse 6, that really explained to us as God speaks to the people and really explains to them why he's not responding to them, uh, why he's not responding to their fast, uh, why he's not engaging with them. And around verse 6, God tells them why. He said, no, the type of fasting that you all are engaging in, that's not the type of fasting that I'm looking for. Uh, he goes on to explain that the type of fast that I'm looking for is a, pa a fast that uh, supports people, that helps people, that frees people, that helps uh, to set the, set the captains free. I'm looking for a different type of fast. And beloved, that just resonated uh, all week long with my spirit and in my heart all the way up until Sunday morning uh, and uh, made the decision uh, by aid and assistance of the Holy Spirit that our churchwide fast would be different this year. Uh, it would not be like fast uh, of previous years. Of course, we're doing the traditional things and, and you may be engaging in your fast, but our church-wide fast, our sacrifice, uh, our giving up um, and our understanding of what fasting is, it's a sacrifice, it's a giving up. Uh, our fast was to help uh, one of our members, uh, young Kayla I. Allen, a uh, young lady in our church who works diligently in our ministry, in our media ministry, uh, who is uh, in a wheelchair. I won't say that she's disabled because she works hard. Uh, She's in a wheelchair. She has a desire to drive, uh, has a desire to be independent. Uh, and our fast, our sacrifice uh, is going to be um, by the time that Easter, um, not Easter, I'm sorry, Resurrection Sunday morning rolls around. By the time Resurrection Sunday morning rolls around, uh, that we will have secured and outfitted a wheelchair mobile uh, uh, van for this young lady. That is our sacrifice. So we have called on all of our members, all of our friends, all of you all who may catch this broadcast. I want you to go to our website. I want you to hit giving. Uh, when you hit give up in the right hand corner, you'll get a drop down box uh, where you can select uh, Kayla's ride. Uh, I want us to sacrifice and give to that effort. We are off to a great start uh, in that effort, but I want us to really uh, embrace this as our sacrifice, as our fast for 2022 as we head towards resurrection uh, Sunday morning. That's the type of fast that God is looking for. That's the type of sacrifice where we help others, we support each other, we undergird each other, we cover each other. Because look, let's be honest, what is the church if it's not a place that's filled with love? If it's not a, a place that's filled with encouragement? The church ought to be a place that you enjoy coming to, that you look forward to coming to and being a part 
part of and being active in ministry, not just reactive, but but proactive. Uh, and I just believe that if we are just our true and authentic selves, uh, that God can use us in a way. We'll just trust God uh, and step out in those places that he wants us to, uh, that God will blow our minds. And he's already in the midst of doing that by way of the fast that we're committed to. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. Um, with uh, tonight's uh, lesson. Uh, last week, we, we talked about the type of fast uh, that God uh, was looking for. Uh, this week, we want you to know uh, that you are worth it, uh, that you're worth it. Uh, and I started this particular study this morning on our war call, as many of our studies uh, start out during the week on our war call, uh, kind of the incubator for uh, our teaching and our preaching for the week. Uh, and it dropped us in Ephesians chapter to three. Uh, around uh, verse uh, 14, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. Uh, and I, I want to show you a few things tonight uh, in this text as we head towards Calvary, as we head towards Resurrection Sunday morning, uh, to help us understand the importance and the power of Resurrection Sunday morning. I need you to get all of this, need you to take hold of this teaching on, on tonight or whenever you catch this broadcast. It is going to bless your heart, it's going to bless your spirit, and hopefully. Hopefully it's going to help you to regain, uh, if you've lost it, your sense of confidence, your sense of self-worth, uh, your understanding of, of who you are in Christ Jesus. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, uh, beginning at verse 14, Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. Uh, watch this. Watch what, what Paul says from the New Living Translation uh, in verse 14. It says, when I think of all of this, I fall to my knees and I pray to the Father the creator of everything in earth and on in heaven and on earth. I pray that from this glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home. Watch this. He'll make his home in your heart as you trust in him. Um, your roots will grow down into God's love. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power, the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is for each and every one of us. I want, I want to just teach tonight uh, about the depth of God's love. I want us to understand how important it is to grasp what it means uh, and what God's love uh, says about our lives. And therefore, it should enable us to do, it should enable us uh, to walk in. Uh, Paul says here that, look, uh, I think uh, when I think about all these things, I fall down on my knees. He, he's praying uh, to the creator. Paul has been reminiscing about God's plan that he has revealed uh, for his life. Uh, he said that I, I, I think about the unlimited resources that he has empowered uh, you within uh, an inner strength. Uh, Paul is saying that the love of God, the love of God and understanding that the love of God empowers us not from the outside, but from the inside. And beloved, let me pause right there and just park my little moped because all bets are off if we don't understand the importance and the significance of being. Being loved. All of us need to be loved. Children from the very beginning need to understand that they are loved. They need to be nurtured. Uh, they need to be protected. They need to understand that they are worth something. And when you love someone, and especially when you so show love to a child, you give that child that sense of purpose, that sense of confidence, and that sense of understanding that mama and daddy has your back. All bets are off until that foundation of love is established. And as you study scripture, as I, I taught this morning, as you study the scripture, the whole uh, Bible is just a text of God showing and proving to us how much he really loves us. From Genesis to Revelation, there is nothing but love. God continues to, to bring his people out even when they get themselves in. God fights battles for them in the, in the Bible, in the Old Testament. He looks beyond the 
their faults and meets their needs. We get into the New Testament. Jesus Christ comes. He comes to heal. Uh, he, he, he delivers people. He touches. He works, works miracles. Uh, and last Sunday, as we were preaching uh, about uh, Peter uh, cutting off the priest's high, the high priest's ear, uh, and and Jesus just reaching down and, and picking his ear up or, or touching his ear and putting it back on his head, that the chief uh, high priest was even on the wrong side. But yet and still, Jesus Christ, uh, through God the Father, was able to still show love. Uh, so the foundation, the premise for everything is love. And if you don't understand that you are loved, and I know that things happen in our lives. Circumstances happen. Uh, people come and go in our lives. People uh, may treat us bad. We may have certain experiences that, that send a message that's counteractive to our understanding of just how loved we, are, loved we are. And I know sometimes life gets the best of us. Sometimes life pushes us down. Sometimes life presses on us. Sometimes life is so unfair and it seems like you're always the one getting the short end of the stick and we begin to feel some type of way about ourselves but tonight I came to set the captives free and to let you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that from this point forward you no longer ever have to worry about whether you are loved or not. It does not matter if you're tall. It does not matter if you're short. It does not matter if you're skinny. It does not matter if you're thick and full size. It does not matter. God loves all of us because John 3.16 reminds us for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever that means whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have eternal life. You are loved and it is crushing beloved of God. It is so hurtful and painful uh, to look sometimes into people's eyes, to look into children's eyes, to look into adolescents eyes and see that it is just a lack of love Love, that nobody has wrapped their arms around this individual, this young lady or this young gentleman and said, you know what? I love you. Those words are so powerful, but we're talking not about the type of love that sometimes the word, the world gives to us. It's a world, uh, a love that is conditional. It's a love that is predicated upon other things and certain things happening. No, I'm talking about an agape love that no matter what what you have done, that God still loves us. No matter how far you have fallen, the Lord is still able to reach way down to pick you up. And here in this text, Paul writes to the church at Ephesus. He reminds them that, look, you got unlimited resources that will empower you from the inside. He said, then watch this. He said, then uh, Christ will make uh, his home in your heart as you trust him uh, in order to get uh, the love on the inside, not the outside, because external factors are going to change on you. Uh, environmental factors press on external factors and they will change on you. But Paul here is talking about making uh, uh, this place in your heart to grow strong, roots down on the inside, that your, your roots will grow, be grown uh, in the love of God. You got to get that. That, that, that sometimes we try to grow roots in the wrong places. Uh, we try to grow roots in relationships with people thinking that that's going to be enough. We try to grow roots on our job. We try to grow roots by reliving our lives through our children. But Paul is saying here, no, that you will grow roots in, in the love of God, that your roots will be, we will penetrate, not these surfaces here on earth, but it's going to go to a place that is sustainable, one that won't move on you, one that will not shift on you. And beloved, when you understand where true love really comes from, uh, it does not come from the things of this life and of this world. I'm not hating on any of that. Uh, all of us want nice things. All of us want uh, to be able to experience life at a 
different level. I get that. But you cannot hang your blessed assurance on external factors. Let me say that again. You cannot hang your blessed assurance. You cannot put your confidence in stuff because heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will continue to stand. He said, then Christ will make his home in your heart. When Christ has made a home in your heart, then you are not as apt. You're not as easily knocked off your being. You're not as uh, sub subjected uh, or susceptible uh, to the whims of life. And when I say the whims of life, I mean things that just come into your life that's unexpected. When Christ is resident on the inside of you, you can weather external storms. Paul goes on to say, uh, and, and into uh, uh, the love of God, and he will keep you strong, that you'll grow roots into God's love and he'll keep you strong. And may you have the power, watch this, may you have the power to understand as all of God's people should, here it is, this is what I've been trying to get to, that you're going to have this knowledge and power to understand that you need to grasp, as I talked this morning on a call, you need to grasp that the love of God, that he says is so wide, it's so long, it's so high, and it is so deep uh, that you cannot get around the love of God. And when you know that you are loved, when you understand how far God's love reaches. That's the, the width of God, that the love of God reaches so far up. Uh, God's great love, uh, it sits together uh, up in heaven and, and Jesus Christ and the Father. Jesus Christ stands in the gap for us, interceding for us and making sure uh, that God doesn't take us out. That's the type of love that, that Jesus Christ covers a multitude of our sins by dying on the cross. And God love reaches is higher than the tallest mountains, higher than the highest star. And when we love God, God loves us tremendously back, more than what we could ever imagine. And I'm pushing on you tonight to not put your faith and confidence in external factors, but to understand that it is already a given, uh, that, that love is a given. Yes, we have to earn respect and trust, but love Love is a given. Christ loves us regardless of who we are. He loves us because we are his. He may not love the things that we do and like the things that we do, but never lose sight of the fact that you are loved. He says that it, it's wide. Uh, the, the, the love of God is wide. Then he says that it's long. And how far will God go uh, to redeem you back to him? Uh, we know from studying Bible that he sent his only son to die on the cross. But let's not even go there. Let's look back over your life and look back over my life and see how far did God go to redeem you? Did God show up in some of those juke joints that you were in? Did God show up in some of those places that you knew you should not have gone to? Did God not provide ways over and over again when you weren't serving him, you weren't calling on God, you ain't know no God, that God went to great lengths? Did God not come see about you when you were on your sick bed, that God went to great lengths to show us how much that he loves us. And by now, beloved, after all that we have been through, after all we have seen, I don't know about you, but my faith has been strengthened because I have seen God do some amazing things over the last few years. I've seen God work on my mind, work on my heart. I've seen God God show up when I didn't know which way to go and what to do. Man, man, I have seen God put things together, put the puzzle together, send resources that I never imagined, did not even know. Man, I need a witness right there that God has went to great lengths over the last few years of your life. And by now, if you didn't know before, you should absolutely know that the Lord loves you, that God goes to great lengths. He's wide, he's long, and why? 
watch this. He said that that you don't know how high the love of God is. God, he said, you got to grasp how high God's love is, uh, the height of God's love and beloved of God. When you understand uh, that the, the word of uh, the word of God and, and God's love reaches way up, uh, his love is perfect. Watch this. It's perfect in us. And God's love reaches into the heart and to the soul. Uh, it breaks down evil. It casts out fears. It perfects our spirit that the love of God is so high. Paul is trying to paint this picture that no matter what you have been thinking about yourself, you are worth it. And that is what Resurrection Sunday morning is about. That is what Calvary is about, is to show you that you are worth it. Don't you ever get down on yourself. Don't you ever think that you're less than. Don't you ever look at what other people may have or what they may be doing or what they have accomplished and think that you're not just as loved as they are because God is no respecter of person. His love reaches as far, far high, as far up as you can ever imagine. It goes way up into the heavens, into the heavenly host, and it rains down blessings in our lives. Then he says it's, it's a high love. It's a wide love. It's a long love. It's a high love. Then it's a deep love. I love that part right there because that shows us how far, not just how high God will go, but how low the Lord will go to redeem his children, that you can never fall so low that God won't reach down and pick you up. That makes you shout right there. It makes you understand that I can always get back into proper relationship with the Lord. I can always get back on my, my game. I can always get back in line because of the breadth of God, because of the length of God, because of the depth of God, and because of the height of God. God is the source of love. Love. God is the creator of love. God is the one that loved us so much that every single day, God is the only one. I don't care what you say. God is the only one that's going to show you true love. So Paul's petition is this to the church at Ephesus. Paul is saying to the church at Ephesus, now I need you to focus on the love of Christ. Uh, I need you to understand his prayer for them is that I need you to realize the greatness that's available to you, the greatness that you have in your possession. I need you to know and to accept uh, that in order to continue to grow continually, um, that Christ loves us. Uh, I need you to understand that the ultimate purpose of why he sent his son, the ultimate reason was the fact that he loved us. And beloved of God, in order to grow your faith, in order for you to grow stronger in the Lord, in order for you to exercise your faith and to step out on faith, you have to get the foundation correct. Because if you are searching for love in all the wrong places, if you're looking for validation from people and expecting for people to approve of you, to celebrate you, uh, to tell you that you're great, to encourage you and to make you feel loved, you may not get that love from the places that you so richly deserve, that so richly need it. But if you put your confidence in God, if you already start from the premise, knowing that because God made me, he loved me and still loves me because God created me, that I'm loved. I am enough. I am worth it. I am capable. You got to learn how to speak power into yourself because words have power. And what you say to yourself and about yourself, it absolutely matters. But if if you start off with a crooked foundation, y'all know, many of y'all know I mess around in real estate a little bit. And I've seen a many of a house, I've seen a many of a home go up. But if the foundation starts off shaky, if the foundation is crooked and not totally aligned, 
If it's not totally level, you can build the house, but you will build the house on a shaky foundation. And by the time you get to the top of the house and framing the house, everything else in the house is going to be off center. And it is hard to make up for a faulty foundation. It's hard to correct a foundation that's out of balance. It's hard to create, to fix something that started out with not a chance to make it. And if you don't start your life, and if you don't start the premise in your life all from this jump, if you don't have a jump off point that I'm loved, that I am uh, appreciated, that I am good enough, uh, that I can compete with just about anybody, uh, that I don't have to bow down to anybody. I don't worship anybody but God Almighty when you get the foundation right. And the more, watch this, the more, the more, the more. That's why I love when he said that I need you to grasp. It lets us know that one, we don't have a full understanding yet. That there's more that we can even realize. There's more that we can come to understand. There's more that we can study and grow to. There's more faith, my God. There's more faith that we can exercise. There's more of God's word that we can walk in. He said, I need y'all to grab this. Church at Ephesus, come here. I need y'all to grab this. Because the more you know about God, and the more you understand his amazing love, love and amazing grace and the merciful and miraculous miracles, the more you will be able to be an optimistic and not a pessimistic per person. The more you will be able to live and reside in a place of power. The less hits your self-esteem will take and not be able to recover from because you will be starting with a great foundation. Everything flows from the understanding that you know that you are loved, that you know that you have value. Look, you may not know your total value. You may not know your total worth, but I pray that you are working towards understanding your total value and your total worth. And peep this, it continues to grow as you continue to grow. It continues to expand as you continue to expand your knowledge, uh, your experience, your wisdom, your expertise in God. The more you trust God, the more you uh, exercise your faith, the the more you'll come to know God better, the more blessings he'll pour down into your life. And you will realize that I am loved. I'm favored by God. I'm not only blessed, but I am blessed and I am highly favored. You got to get the foundation right. And Paul says, I need you to grasp it, that the width of God's love, that God's love is so wide. I need you to grasp the length of God's love, that God will go to great lengths for us. I need you to grab the height of God's love, that it is so high that you can't get above it. And I need you to grasp uh, the, the depth of God's love, that how Deep God will go uh, to make sure that his children, his children are redeemed back to him. Aren't you glad about Calvary? Aren't you glad that we're headed towards resurrection Sunday morning and God is revealing some things to us? God is showing us what fasting is all about. He take us, took us to a place tonight to just simply remind us, don't you ever think that you're not worth it. You are worth it because you are loved and you need to grasp that. You need to work on elevating your understanding of the love that God has for you, that God has for your family, that God wants the best for you, and that the best is yet to come. But you got to grasp the understanding that I am loved. I came by to tell you tonight, yes, yes, you are worth it. Yes, God wants to use you. Yes, you are capable. Yes, you are enough. And you don't have to ever seek validation from anyone else. I know we all want to be loved. We all want the arms wrapped around us. We all want to be encouraged. But baby, honey, dude, if you can't get it, you know that you can get it from right here with your relationship with God. You can get it from the scripture because God loves us to the point that we can't get around it. We can't run past it. We can't go over it and we definitely can't get under it. I pray tonight has blessed you. I pray it drops you in a healthier and a happier place. And I pray that you always know and never question again in your life whether the Lord loves you. May God bless you some kind of good and may heaven continue to smile upon you. Be blessed.